So we've just crossed the Prepyat River to the east and are now going towards a small town called Kashivka. It's quite a bumpy ride as you can see, but finally we are arriving at the small abandoned town of Kashivka. Here you can see the former bus stop. It is now, well, just an overgrown place with nothing much left nearby. But uh, some intact houses, as you can see. Some also totally broken ones, like this totally wooden one. But, uh, well, let's move on to the houses that are still intact and see what's inside. Going past the totally wrecked ones, that might be a little dangerous to enter, as you can see the roof there. But this one looks fine, let's see. The intact paint almost looks as if somebody has repainted it recently. Uh, this place has been abandoned for 30 years. And well, there's not much left in here. But sometimes you find little treasures, such as this photo frame. Which pretty much tells about the family history of the people who used to live here. Oh, it's from maybe for your kitchen, you know, you can crush something with it. Mm. Like, yeah. Or you can clap somebody on the head. That's for Ukrainian baseball. <laughs> 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 Homeland literature, what is this? It's from... Uh, yeah. Moscow, 1979. Finding some more photos of which seems to be a family of a Soviet working class. Probably two brothers, I don't know. And this one is a photo of soldiers. You can see it as I zoom in. Makes you wonder what it was like to look outside of this window some 30 years ago. What their garden was like. You would also find some sheds with like hay and stuff inside. So people apparently kept cows and pigs and chicken here. And now, well, it's mostly nature reclaiming everything. This tree looks as if it had been struck by lightning. This actually appears to be some fresh deer poo. And there was a lot of it scattered around this village. So there seemed to be a lot of deer nearby, but I didn't see any. These shy animals probably left as soon as they heard us. And mostly, these places have an eerie silence to them. Unless, of course, you hear the birds sing. This is just like a barn, a storage place. Just a very small place outside of the house where people would keep their stuff, such as barrels and whatever kind of stuff that can be stored outside. But it also had this thing here, Aptechka Universalnaya, Universal Pharmacy Kit. I don't know, for animals or for humans. Oh, calendar. To 
until 1986. Most of these houses look quite similar. With uh, this uh, oven at the entrance, usually with a bed on top of it as well, so you can sleep on it in very cold winter nights. And then, well, a table, storage stuff, a bed, or as this was, like a huge table. And another room with a smaller stove. And uh, maybe if the people were kind of rich, then maybe a couch or something. And uh, well, you can also find these little relics of the families who used to live here. Everywhere. This one says happy birthday. It's nearly impossible to make out where streets used to be or where a marketplace used to be because, well, you can see all these trees growing everywhere. It's just covered with uh, wild nature. It. Somebody wrote with hand. Oh. Apparently, just some administration stuff. Articles about Pushkin, Lermontov, and Gogol. I don't know about you, but I really like strolling around these places. Finding little treasures such as family history. By the way, uh, the background radiation was normal here, same as in the town of Chernobyl. But this will change as we are going further north to the other villages that are closer to the nuclear power plant. So I hope you also enjoyed this little look at the town of Kashivka.